What happens in the sky affects life down here on Earth. The celestial compass shows you how and guides your way with astrology you can use from professional astrologer Kathy Beale. Every episode features her light-hearted practical forecasts and navigational tips, blended with humor, optimism, and a love of patterns, symbolism, and pop culture references. Kathy translates technicalities into concepts that apply to real life. You'll learn how the current moment ties to where we've been, from the recent past to cycles that last happened years ago, and get a look at where we're heading. And much more, from special topics to special guests. The Celestial Compass. Enlightening, entertaining, and empowering. Here's your host, Kathy Beale. Greetings, Earthlings. This is Kathy Beale of EmpowermentUnlimited.net. And before we dive into today's incredibly exciting topic, I just want to remind you that I have forecasts for you for the month for every new moon and full moon at omtimes.com and also at my site empowermentunlimited.net where I have a sassy weekly podcast as well. Now I'm going to forego any of the current predictive talk this time so we can spend as much time as possible on today's topic. Fasten your seatbelts folks. We're going to address Pluto, the U.S., and world events. This is a bigger look at what's been going on, what is now going on. That's the current media darling of the astrology world, the U.S. Pluto return. And I am thrilled to have as my companion on this wild ride, uh, astrologer Robert Glasscock, who was here last year discussing political astrology with me. For more than 56 years and 56,000 clients, Robert Glasscock has consulted with people from over 122 countries. He authored over 250,000 words annually for many years in American Astrology Magazine's monthly and annual yearbooks. His writings for newspaper columns, magazine articles, and anthologies have been cited by Liz Green, among others. He conducts astrology webinars for organizations internationally, and, and this is how I know him for the past nine years, he's also presented over 300 webinars, classes, workshops, and practicums for Kepler College. He hosts student-requested solar arcs practicums, for the fourth, maybe now fifth, continuous year for in-depth astrological work, predicting events, later confirmed in the news. Welcome, Bob. So glad you're with us. Thank you, Kathy. What an introduction. I hope I well, live up to that. <laughs> they're your words. Now, you can't, you know, you can't go online this month, this week, today without seeing something about a uh, Pluto return and I would like to start with some very basic things as in defining our terms. Can you tell I have a pile up in Sagittarius? So, defining our terms a return is when a planet comes back to a position that it occupied at an earlier point, uh, like a birth chart, when it makes a full cycle. Is that a correct statement? Absolutely. And Pluto has a cycle of about 248 years. So, um, what, so what is Pluto? <laughs> what does Pluto well, do? <laughs> Uh, Pluto is one of the archetypes in astrology, and they all, now, we have carbon-dated bone carving of the phases of the moon going back to 10,000 to 500 years before the Common Era, which means they are 12,500 years old, so that at least for 12,000 years. 500 years, mankind has been correlating events on Earth with the positions of the wanderers, the planet, and of course the sun and the moon. And each planet has a different cycle. Pluto takes about 248 years to make a complete cycle through the zodiac. The sun takes 
365 days. So, is that right? So, each planet moves at a different rate from the perspective of Earth, and it's the timing, I guess, of these archetypes in motion, because the solar system is, in effect, a living being in which we find our existence as humans, and basically, I don't know, Kathy, about you, but over all these years, my experience has simply been that consciousness operates on multi-levels of awareness, so that certainly we're aware as human beings of our bodies and, and our families and our home and our food and our jobs, our individual concepts. But at a larger level, we've got a collective society, and, and it's under tremendous threat right now in America. Democracy itself is under threat globally, so it's not just here. But Pluto, because of the length of its cycle, we have never had this in our history, in American history. So it's quite new, and often in these uh, solar arc workshops, as I know, which uh, you have contributed so wonderfully to, uh, people will say, well, we've had Saturn going through Capricorn before, this is last year. And, and it didn't bring, and I said, yeah, we have had, we have had it repeatedly because Saturn takes about 29 years to make a complete cycle. But we have never had that Saturn return or, or Saturn position happen at the same time with Pluto's return. This is historic for that reason. And if you pay attention to the words people use, Plutocracy is the word that's associated with Pluto, at least politically. And there are other, other areas of life where the same archetype, of course, will have different meanings as they all do. The moon, for example, in Monday astrology will represent the public. So each planet has a host of meanings which have been attributed to it over millennia. I don't know if this is confusing the matter or helping it. Well, okay, so Pluto, plutocracy, huge wealth, huge power, but Pluto is also an influence of, uh, well, you can think of him as the guy with the scythe. It's an influence of death and rebirth, of absolute transformation and metamorphosis, and it's in a sign associated with the status quo, with institutions, and we've, and Pluto in the sign of Capricorn has historically been associated with massive splits in power. The, the last time this happened in the uh, three quarters in the late 1700s, um, and a little later than that, the U.S., uh, the colony split off from England, so it has an impact on England, which we can talk about in a second. And then the time before that, uh, Martin Luther tacked 95 theses to a cathedral door, in, uh, in in Germany, and gradually the greatest power on the globe at that time, the Catholic Church, had a threat to its power, and Protestantism split off. So massive, massive uh, changes in institutions that wield great power have previously happened. Oh, and the French Revolution started up while this was going on as well. Oh, right. uh, incidentally. Incidentally, yes. Although I will say that the guillotine action was once Pluto had uh, moved into Aquarius. So the next thing I want to talk about is what 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 is actually the chart that the return is happening in, and that is the July fourth, seventeen seventy six chart, which is when the Declaration of Independence was signed. So it's the return for that chart, but we could argue for the next couple of hours about whether it's the return for our country, because I know some astrologers like to use the Yorktown chart when Britain finally said, we give up, we'll let you have it. And some others like to use the chart of when the Constitution was signed. Mm -hmm. So we're talking now about the July 4th, 1776 Declaration of Independence chart. What we call the Sibley chart. It's set for 5, 10 p.m. And, and, you know, when I first when I first started out, Kathy, like all astrologers, there are a, a variety. They're not that many. 
but there are several options in terms of times and sometimes even dates. And believe me, I have worked with them all. Now, I'll tell you with this chart, because I worked with this, I quickly set it on this chart, and I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. uh, because, as you know, we, we use something called solar arcs in astrology, which means that the birth planets each advance closely one degree per year. And so does the midheaven, so does the ascendant. Well, I, I demonstrated back in a lecture that I gave for Kepler College on November the 4th, 2017, the uncanny coincidence that the midheaven in the United States chart, and that is a point that will change one degree for every approximately four minutes of birth time. So it's, a, it's highly specific and very time sensitive. On Donald Trump's election, and practically to the day that he was sworn in, the midheaven, which in the United States chart is the, the tenth cusp, let's say, it's ten, and that represents the president, the king, the person in power. And 248 years, or not now, uh, when he was elected, the midheaven had just entered the sign of Gemini, Donald Trump's sign. And when a planet ingresses into a new sign, it is a major change in whatever that archetype indicates, in this case, the presidency of the United States. So I have used this chart again and again and again over the years. I'm fine with it, and I'm really not interested. In, I know you're not planning on doing this, in debating no. the various different times. But that's no, why no, no. I use this one. That's why I use this one. I have found it works. And people will argue about various times of day, but I can give you, I could, you know, I could spend the next hour telling you similar stories to what you have about about it. All right, so uh, Pluto is now, as of tomorrow, coming back exactly to the location that it occupied on July 4th, mm -hmm. 1776, and it's going to hang out, it's a 27 degrees Capricorn, it's going to hang out there uh, for the a good number of weeks and then it will go up to 28 degrees and in June and July it'll retrograde back to 27 degrees and then again in December and January it'll go across the point where it currently is again. So it's a three-part dance so it's not something that's happening in one day kind of like an eclipse it's a process people and actually I would argue that we've been watching this process already taking shape. Absolutely. I think people forget how long this cycle is. Pluto's orbit is extremely elliptical, more so than any other planet. So it spends uh, a great, di it spends different lengths of time in one sign versus another. Unlike the sun, for example, which has a pretty circular, or, or excuse me, at least from astrology standpoint, the Earth centered. Uh, the sun has a circular orbit, but Pluto's around the sun is not circular. So it can spend, a, oh, 20, 30 years in a time. And what happens is you can, try, if you look at Pluto's archetype, which does have to do with power, it does have to do with extremes. It does have to do with what we loosely call death and rebirth and transformation. And astrologers use that, that term like a hallmark card. Oh, you're undergoing transformation. Well, transformations involve death. The death of, and usually in astrology, the death of birth figure is not that. But in mundane, it's pretty darn literal. So Pluto, when it entered Capricorn, Capricorn worldwide is the sign of government government. So ever since Pluto entered Capricorn, we've been seeing the death and rebirth, let's go back to 2008 or so, right. of, of government around the world, and increasingly, as you can see more out of the news, increasingly moving toward dictatorships, primarily because in times of panic and uncertainty, historically that's what people do. And you can see it now in this country. 
I just this week was reading an article about how Americans are self-selecting where they move based on their politics now. So unconsciously, American population, America's population is already exacerbating the polarization unconsciously. You've got people in California, it's gotten too liberal, so they're moving to Texas. So people want to be around and in a state that reflects their own belief system. So this splitting that we're seeing only fuels plutocracy. We have less and less in common every day, and we're more and more polarized every day. And this is very consistent with with Pluto. So on one hand, you would absolutely be within your rights to say we're looking at the death of democracy worldwide. And certainly we're looking at it in the United States. Potentially, potentially. Well, definitely the ground rules aren't being followed anymore. So there's some massive revisiting and renovation that is going on and that has to go on. Well, if you, Bruce Ackerman is a, a professor of law and political science at Yale, <clears throat> and um, he's talking about what is coming up here now is the making of a, he calls it a shattering constitutional crisis. And that's what, exactly what's happening. What's really interesting to me, Kathy, and you know this for your listener, that, um, that lecture, that webinar I gave back on, um, November the 4th, 2017, uh, it provoked the audience into requesting that I start a series of solar art practicums where they can practice the techniques. And with that, and so, we're going to leave this as a, as a teaser and a hanger and take our first break. I'm sorry to interrupt. We'll be back in just right. a few minutes. The cutting edge of conscious radio, OM Times Radio, IOM FM. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. OM Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single OM Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for inspired conversations with publisher Linda Joy on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. Want help with your own celestial compass? Visit my site, empowermentunlimited.net, for Astro Insight forecasts for each week, month, and new and full moon. Want to explore the personal impact? Make a decision? Understand another person? (laughs) It is possible. Click the Services tab to book a personal session with me. That address again, empowermentunlimited.net. Coping 19, brought to you by CDC and the Ad Council. If you're feeling increasingly lonely right now, you're not alone. It's totally normal. Even though we may not be able to get together in person, connecting virtually with friends and family still gives you a chance to interact with people and may help raise your spirits. Join a virtual book club, set up group text chats, or online video coffee breaks with coworkers. Find more self-care and coping tips at coping-19.org. Welcome back to Celestial Compass. We're talking with Robert Glasscock about Pluto, the U.S. and world events. And you were just starting to bring up the start of your solar arc practicums. 
Well, the results of that webinar were fascinating. So we started the solar practice at the beginning of 2018. I'm all set to do solar art from their personal charts. Oh, no. The first question, it was a group of, I don't know how many people, 10 or so. Uh, first question was, is Donald Trump going to prison? And I thought, oh, my kind of group. <laughs> so I stepped them through it using Donald Trump's horoscope, which I had been using in that webinar. I, I only used two horoscopes in that November 4th, 2017 webinar, the United States horoscope and Donald Trump. So here suddenly they're asking about Donald Trump going to prison, and I, I said, where would you look? And they said, uh, the 12th house, I said, exactly. And what, what else would you look? I stepped them through it. And they finally said very hesitantly, uh, yes. And I said, absolutely, if he doesn't die first. Well, that was in the beginning of 2018, Kathy. As you remember, nobody was talking about Donald Trump going to prison. And yet, look at where we are today. So what astrology becomes, for, for me anyway, and for this group, is looking at these forecasts and making them, for example, one of the things we very early looked at was the absolute potential for civil war in this country. This was back at the beginning of 2018. And that is going to be exact in about two and a half years from now. When we started, it was about six years off. But as I said to them, if you make these projections, if you're looking at a horoscope like this, and you see a projection of, say, civil war in five, six years, now your job becomes to look at events and see, are we moving closer to that, or are we pulling back from it? And one of the things, one of the pullbacks was when Joe Biden was elected, which we absolutely predicted. Thank God all of this is recorded, audio, video, so it's not just blowing smoke. So, yeah, we predicted Joe Biden's win, but as we said, it's not going to change much. It is still dire. And it is. So, so you, get, you, you, you go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say, we can, we can, let's, let's look at ways that uh, Pluto plowing through the end of Capricorn and now sitting at 27 degrees Capricorn. I see this in, in the news, and it's not just about the threats to our democracy, although um, that's a huge one, and you can see it all over the world. But uh, even just looking at the relation, that the, looking at what's going on in Britain, and that when Pluto was last in this area of the sky, Britain lost a major chunk of real estate, and... <laughs> Under this same uh, influence right now, what has come up? Well, under this, the whole issue of Brexit is part of it. Still floating around and trying to deal with the economic ramifications of pulling out of the European Union. So no longer being associated with a huge um, chunk of real estate that isn't on their shores. Um, but you were talking about extremes. How about extremes in wealth? Extremes in wealth inequality. Because Pluto does rule extremes in astrology. And Pluto at birth in the United States horoscope was in the traditional house of money, the economy, in the second house. Uh, and basically what's fascinating to me metaphysically is money, whether you're talking about a personal horoscope or a nation's horoscope, is at, it's the same house, the second house, and it rules self-worth. Excuse me? Yes, the sign on the cusp of the second house tells you your attitudes about money. But they also, that sign and the planets and that will tell you about the person's self-worth or lack of it. So what we're doing now, what we're witnessing now with Pluto's return is an extreme re-evaluation of our self-worth, namely capitalism, democracy, etc. And then what's important, Pluto is moving toward Aquarius, where it will spend a long time. And that is a sign, uh, it's an explosive sign of radicalism. It certainly is a wonderful sign for humanitarianism, if it can stand a chance, and it, it can, against tyrants. 
But it's also um, a sign that he's sometimes called crazy. You know, the old, old, old cliche about two Aquarians getting married, that means there are two cuckoos in the clock. And I don't mean, I mean, I, that's not literal. It's a kind of lighthearted approach to it. But nonetheless, Aquarius is very much a sign of rebellion, nonconformity, radicalism, and so on. So it's, if we don't do something about what's going on now, for example, Bruce Ackerman says the next election will provoke a genuine constitutional crisis unless decisive steps are taken soon to prevent it. And the Aquarius also has to do with anarchism. Yes, absolutely. And he goes, Ackerman goes into a great detail about this. Now, look, I don't think Trump is going to, to run myself. Uh, what do you think about this, Kathy? Oh, no, I don't. I don't. I think he's in a major fundraising campaign right now. Um, I don't I don't think he will run for office again. Mm-mm. See, I don't either, simply because of the pileups of criminality. Well, it's gotten, I, I think it's finally passed the tipping point. It's really no matter how died hard conservative you are, it's pretty impossible to not acknowledge what this man and this party have done especially in falsely declaring the big lie that the election was stolen. Uh, And this is how tyrants work, is on misinformation and disinformation and confusion, so that nobody anymore quite knows what is real and true, which lets dictators come, come in. Now, this brings up the fact there's another big influence going on that is coinciding with the U.S. Pluto return. The Pluto return is not happening in a vacuum. Um, There's other stuff that's been going on with it that I'd like to talk about that is, and well, first, I'll start with that since I brought it up. Since early December, all of the inner planets have been having conversations with Pluto, is one way to put it. Venus, which rules money and what we value. Mercury, which rules information and also even physical papers. And uh, Mercury had three conjunctions with Pluto. Venus has had two. And at the beginning of March, Venus and Mars together are going to have a third. And I think that these guys are working over all of the Plutonian stuff that's been going on and bringing it out into the open. And hence the fire hose of news, even down to the amazing Mercury-Pluto conjunction imagery of somebody ripping up documents and flushing them (laughs) in a toilet. That is a perfect Mercury-Pluto in Capricorn event. Um, So I think there's a lot more to come very, very soon. But um, there's another long-term event going on that touches to the U.S. chart. And you have brought this up. And that, and you've just alluded to it in your comments. And that is Neptune, which I call the Cosmic Fog Machine, currently being in opposition to the U.S. Neptune in the July 4th, 1776 chart in our House of Beliefs and Laws. That's where our current yeah. Neptune is. Now, I'm sure, and, and it's, it's yeah, at any rate, you have brought this up to me privately. How do you think this all fits in? <laughs> well, I really think that Neptune in the United States chart is probably the single most important archetype that we have, and it has some very good things associated with it, too. It is angular. It's in the 10th house. It's in the house of the presidency. But because of certain aspects, for example, at the birth of the nation, Neptune square Mars, Neptune in Virgo, in the 10th square Mars in Gemini, is a classic indication of racism. So that this nation was founded on basically exterminating Native Americans, the ones that we could not exterminate, we put into concentration camps that we call reservations. And then there was, of course, slavery, which is the ultimate in racism. Our our country was founded on it. 
And part of me has always felt, and we've talked about this in these workshops, that I don't, I don't know that it's possible for this country to overcome its systemic problems such as racism. And the second one is religiosity. When I first started these practicums, I said to the group, we are going to have to talk about the two things we're not supposed to talk about in this country. What's that? Religion and politics. We have Sagittarius rising, and it rules both. And they're tied up together, as we have seen since George Floyd and the whole of the rest of it. So I'm not so sure that we're not, Kathy, in a phase uh, that could ultimately lead to a French Revolution. The complete falling apart of American democracy and even American society, if we're not careful. Now, I have to tell you, at birth, Neptune and Pluto were in a trine aspect in our horoscope. Thank God. That's a very, that's a very hopeful aspect for us overcoming uh, the corruption, frankly. Neptune has to do with pollution, as you know, and corruption. And currently transiting Neptune is the opposite of the place of birth. Transiting Neptune is in our fourth house of our nation's foundation, which has to do with the Constitution. So reworking, revising, refining our Constitution is very necessary. We need to get rid of the Electoral College, for example. And that's just one thing. I don't know that because of the polarization that it's ever going to be possible again for us to ag actually negotiate, compromise, and come together. I don't know that it's possible anymore. In which case, the only solution is blow it all up and see where the cards fall. And it's a horrible thing to say. But history teaches this over and over again. When it gets beyond the point of repair, rational repair, then you turn to the irrational solution, which is violence, which is never a solution. But that's what, that's what I fear most out of this. And this election coming up, the midterms even, are really important and much less than 2024. And so Neptune currently, because it has a different cycle, is uh, where it was in 1856. Uh, it's before, before the Civil War. Um, but it's kind of moving into that territory. And before Neptune leap. Is Neptune going to actually make an exact sextile to Pluto? I think Pluto's going to move into Aquarius before Neptune does. No, I'm talking about I'm talking about Pluto in the birth chart. No, I understand that, but I mean, uh, trans will transiting will okay. So transiting Neptune will make a sextile to Pluto in it, the birth it, chart. It, yeah, it, it's sextiling it now. It's within or is it twenty two now and, and Pluto is at twenty seven Capricorn. Uh, Neptune's at twenty. So you'd use an orb that big, okay. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Now it won't be exact, you see, until later. But something else that I have found interesting, just to take transiting Mars, because it is also in Capricorn right now. Mars takes about two years to go around the zodiac. So it's in Capricorn for about six weeks, once every two years unless it turns retrograde. But it is applying now to the conjunction with our birth, Pluto, in the second house. So this has absolutely economic ramifications on the... But for Donald Trump and the presidency, we started talking about transiting Mars in Sagittarius about two months ago, three months ago. And we had said that watch the news. Watch how these investigations, the January 6th committee investigations and, and all the other ones, start hitting at some key figures behind the scenes, people like Alan Weisselberg, for example. Then, as Mars goes into Capricorn by transit, which it did about three weeks ago or four, when Mars goes into Cap Capricorn, is people at the top, not people behind the scenes. So we said when Mars gets into Capricorn, that's when the scandals and crimes hitting the very top, namely Donald Trump, Donald Trump Jr., Ivanka Trump, and all the rest. And lo and behold, it has been nothing but 
that one after the other after the other. Donald Trump keeps losing in court, losing in court, losing in court, and now even the children have to testify. If they take the fifth, it's all over, because then they're also being prosecuted in criminal trials. Where anyway, do you see where this is going? Right, and and it's also. They're one really amazing example of this, but we're seeing it in many, many other ways. The heat being turned up on uh, the royal family over Prince Andrew's past relationship and that coming to a settlement kind of unexpectedly uh, last week. Um, More and more Jeffrey Epstein type news hitting and... More and more, I just think there's a fire hose of information about sex trafficking and sex tra- crimes involving really powerful people. And that seems Absolutely. to all be tied to, to and, and Mars moving in, mo- moving into a conjunction with Pluto and Capricorn would seem to be a trigger and bringing a lot of action on those types of crimes and scandals. And guess what? That transit of Mars is coming right up. It will exactly conjoin Pluto in about, what, uh, 13 days or so? March 3rd. So March 3rd. And then uh, it's going to do something that I want to... Yeah, go on. I wanted to go back to something you just said about Britain, because the, the crisis in the royal family is actually a crisis in the monarchy, just as we are having a crisis in democracy. Uh, Britain is also a democracy, and they're in trouble, too. And they were the, the minute they got uh, breakfast, for example. So the monarchy is, is under a great deal of threat. Why should Britain continue paying this family all this money every year? Well, there's a lot of historic and sentimental and even practical reasons to keep the monarchy going. And with but that, it, time for yet yeah. another break. I'm going to just butt okay. in with my... Fire Moon here, and we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Bringing a more conscious lifestyle to your world. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. How would you like navigational tools you can use on your own? Visit my site, empowermentunlimited.net, and click the Shop tab. There you'll find lots of talks and guides explaining the big influences at work now, like Saturn in Aquarius and Uranus in Taurus. You'll also find a variety of guided visualizations for relaxing, clearing your energy, or getting to know planetary archetypes. That address again, empowermentunlimited.net. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. If I could be you. And you could be me. For just one hour. If you could find a way. To get inside. Each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. Welcome back to Celestial Compass. We're in our final in segment of our uh, conversation with Robert Glasscock about what in the world's going on with Pluto and Capricorn. And you were just bringing up the crisis with the monarchy in Britain. Yes, and it's sim- symptomatic of uh, the crisis really in democracy everywhere. Democracy, as it turns out, is a very 
difficult and tricky political system to keep alive, uh, more so than any other system, really. And uh, when you get into this, well, Bruce Ackerman's description of what he sees coming up, it's pretty darn alarming. Um, because I, I don't want to get into too much detail, but let me say that um, I'm trying to see where... Well, he's talking about in 2023, this is Bruce Ackerman from Yale. In 2023, the nation will be split into two parts. Now, this guy is not an astrologer, uh, but he's talking like one. In the constitutionalist region, which is the Constitution of the Supreme Court people, Trump uh, will be disqualified. In the insurrectionist region, which is the... the the people, the population that believes that uh, believes the big lie, then the electoral authorities will validate Trump as a legitimate candidate for the vote. Now, you and I, I think, agree. I don't see Trump running. Bruce Ackerman does, apparently. No. But he points out, you can imagine the scene for the rest of the campaign season. Trump will organize massive rallies in the insurrectionist state, while the Democratic opposition in these states will respond with counter-demonstrations. Violent confrontations may well result, this is the Yale scholar talking, at the same time, Democrats will mobilize against Trump in the constitutionalist states, and Republicans will passionately defend him. And it goes on. It oh, I'm thinking that very, very current well. events may change that, but... <laughs> but, but, but we, I let you... I interrupted you when you were making a point about the monarchy, about yeah. its relevance being now a thing that's in question. Yes. With Pluto in Capricorn and and uh, more recently, all of this, I just find it fascinating, all of this activity going on in Capricorn with the inner planets, like we're, we're, we're bringing it, whatever this big transit is, we're bringing it down into Earth earthly chunks that we can see and work with and deal with and process and moving ahead well, with too, them. You know, Kathy, if you go back on Love Pluto transit, uh, I was uh, still teaching in L.A. at this point when Pluto entered Sagittarius. And what did we predict? Religious terrorism, the rise of religious terrorism, which is exactly what happened. Uh, and it was not just in the, in the Middle East. So it went finally from Sagittarius, it moved into Capricorn, where it is now almost at the end of its transit, and about to enter Aquarius. Aquarius has really not much to do with monarchies. Capricorn does, because it's, Capricorn's all about tradition and conformity and, and conservatism. And certainly, conservatism is an essential, uh, essential archetype to have. If we didn't have it, we wouldn't conserve anything. But we do. So, uh, you're looking at the transits now of Pluto about to ingress into Aquarius. And that's a sign of breaking up in, in traditional astrology. It's often a sign of divorce. Uh, so, I, I think that we are probably in for, I hate to say decades, but at least one decade of what appears to be a very revolutionary period around the world. Will we survive it? I certainly hope so. You have to hope so. But in the face of the reality that what is it, six nations have atomic weapons, you see, <laughs> now suddenly what we're talking about there. All anybody has to do, Kim Jong-un, is, is ignite one of them. All anybody has to do is start a war in Crimea for somebody to make a, a snap judgment or a mistake, and suddenly, boom, we're in war, world war. And then Pluto and Aquarius, though, would say that opens the door to something from outer space coming <laughs> and keeping us from blowing the planet up. Um, I had to make I, light I of it. Wish. I, I had wish. to make light. Uh, so this got a little more dire than I was hoping it would. And, and I just led in with all of the, 
inner planets since December, being in, moving across Pluto and working with this and making it something that we can digest and apply to our own lives. So uh, what does an ordinary human do during this? How do you make use of or come to grips with this influence in your own private life? Well, the same way that you lived through the Nazis in Germany, if you lived in Berlin and you were a Jew. And that means that you either get the hell out or you lie about what you are and who you are to be able to stay and survive. Uh, and look, during World War II, there were many people who made a fortune off that war. They always do. And there were other people who lost everything that they had during that war. So individual people are different. And if you live in a region of, let's say, this country, as I do now, uh, which is in the South and historically a very, uh, let's just say it, very religious. It, it, the West, I mean, America is the most religious country in the West. Uh, so the, and the South then becomes the most religious sector of this nation. So we are, in effect, uh, the most conservative in the South. But I'm not a conservative and never have been. So, But I'm still able to live here just fine. I, I, you know, as you know, I moved back here some years ago uh, because my parents were dying. So you can do it. But I don't want to minimize it either, and I don't want to exaggerate it either. I mean, there. Uh, I think you can maintain your own integrity, and, and if it comes down to that, then yes, you do move, and you do relocate. What I hate to see is this nation become so polarized that it begins to split and segment, and we become like the Middle East. We have the state, the nation of California, which, by the way, California has the fifth largest economy in the world as a state, but then suddenly we've got what, 50 different passports that you need to go from state to state, like the Middle East. And we'll have states in America all at war with each other all the time. And, and, and terrorists, religious, white, Christian, nationalist terrorists provoking trouble. So it's not anything that you can ignore. But, but don't I don't think, think it's necessary. Don't you think that Pluto in the second house means that Economic issues are always going to override what happens. Well, I, I don't know what you mean by override. What the... Oh, well, honestly, I don't see the U.S. splitting into a whole bunch of countries because there are states that are absolutely dependent on other states financially. They don't right. like it, but right. there's, an inter, there's an interdependency of so much and the economic system is so interwoven that I think that the reworking will be some other way. Well, Just my I hope thinking. you're right, but I don't think that you are because we've already seen states like Texas, for example, and Arizona, for example, and Florida, for example, who are simply ignoring laws they don't like, ignoring them. Or they are corrupting them to put in people that they want. But they, either way, they're ignoring laws they don't want to obey because of sincerely held religious beliefs or some option. Or they're actively uh, fighting democracy by shoehorning in their own candidates who are willing to play dictator, like Mr. Florida. So I, that, I'm already seeing this. I'm seeing state after state where the Republican Party, particularly, are willing to break laws or ignore laws that they don't like. Not only that, they're willing to cheat to win, as they did in the election here. They're claiming, oh, the election was stolen. No, it wasn't. But the truth is, I think, and it's been borne out by polls, that they cannot win on their platform because most Americans, for example, want to have the right to abortion. Most Americans want to recognize same-sex marriage. But they have targeted those two, for example, as being hotbed emotional issues that they can use to, to get votes. And if they can't, then they will suppress the vote so that they win or they will take over, which is what they're doing, local election boards, so that the local people can decide who won the election as opposed to anybody else. So I see already that they're splitting into nation state, which is horrible. We're no longer e pluribus unum. 
out of the many, one. We're absolutely in a period now of uh, all for me and screw you. It's horrible. It's a horrible way to live. So in your own life, uh, and boy, do I have to watch it. I just, I, and frankly, I don't really have too many. I live in a very Republican state and town right now. Actually, this town is the only part of Arkansas that votes Democrat. Little Rock, Central Arkansas is blue. The rest of the state is unbelievably red. But I just, I, I limit the kind of time that I spend with these people, which, frankly, I don't have. So it's that kind of thing. I think if you follow your own integrity, you'll be all right. But I'm not, I don't think it's going to be easy at all. I think it's going to get worse. And I wish, and I, 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 I wish, I know, I know you wish I were more optimistic. Oh, uh, no, no, I'm not going to argue you off that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm thinking on a day-by-day basis, if you, if you look at all of this activity in, uh, in Capricorn, uh, working with and activating what's been going on with Pluto there, you certainly could streamline your own life. I would say that one of the outer planet transit and especially the Cancer Capricorn Eclipse uh, themes, one of the themes has been to reprioritize and to simplify and get really clear about what's important and just throw out a whole lot of things that were in your life that are now distractions and annoyances and not well, necessary. I think, too, to the point that you made earlier about uh, income inequality, that is absolutely Pluto in the second house now being triggered by Pluto's return to that position. And look at what's going on with Bitcoin and all that. Most people that I know who are playing around with Bitcoin have no clue what they're doing. No clue. They can't even tell you how it works. But boy, are they That's in very it. Neptunian. And some, people, and some people are making a fortune at Bitcoin. And which is an extreme, like Pluto. So in the na- in the nation's chart, Pluto in the second house, and, and now being transited by the return, points to extreme inequality, absolutely. You, you said overriding, I might say underlying. All mm. of this. People are working harder and longer hours and making less money, relatively speaking, than they were 20 years ago. And then a very few at the top have structured everything, the laws, the courts, and everything else, to make a lot of money at the expense of the rest of us. And that's what's yeah, going dur- on here. Yeah, during the pandemic, I think four U.S. billionaires made astonishing amounts of money. Yeah. Um, well, this is what happened in the French Revolution. Finally, you had all the rich people just running their horse, their horses and carriages over the poor people in the streets, just literally running them over. Uh, and it got so bad. And, and the, the rest of the people had no real options that they finally, finally revo- revolted. And I think that's the point. At some point, things break down to the point where, all right, we may as well risk our lives because this isn't working. And it's, that's a horrible thing to say, but it can absolutely happen here. We've been told this all our lives. It cannot happen here. That old thing about Sinclair Lewis and Strait, uh, fascism will come disguised in a, uh, what, wearing a flag and, and carrying a Bible. Well, he didn't say it, but somebody said something to close. But that's absolutely true. They're wrapping all of the fascism in a religious kind of cloak, which gives them, they think, some sort of imprimatur to do what they want. I can ignore this law because God told me to. I think gays should be killed because God told them to. I think women who get abortion should be killed because God told them to. And if you're in the Middle East, you've got that guy honored killing his sister, who was a big media star. I forget what she did. She did two something or other. So he beheaded her. And it's perfectly all right because his religion condones it. So it's those sorts of extremes that we really, and of course now we're all interconnected with the internet. And this is the saving grace, I think, Kathy. We see instantly what's going on everywhere. 50 years ago or 100 years ago, it would have taken us days, if not weeks, to learn that Putin had invaded Ukraine. Today, (laughs) we're on top of it every second before he invades. So I think that, that openness of the internet and the availability of facts and so on is going to be the saving grace for everybody. And the Internet, by the way, is ruled by Aquarius, where Pluto is headed. 
And we are now, I hate to say, at the end of our time. So tell people, thank you so much, and tell people where they can find you. What is your website? Oh, you can find me online. Just type Robert Glasscock or Robert Glasscock Astrologer, and I'm sure you'll find more than you ever dreamed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have. I just found a bunch of stuff I didn't know I had up on YouTube. Other organizations that put them up. Well, there you just go. Robert, just Google Robert Glass. They can Google you, too. Well, yes, I'm all over the place, empowermentunlimited.net. But thank you very, very much for coming and uh, riding this wild animal. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, we'll probably check in again as uh, events play out. And uh, just keep in mind, everybody, that the beginning of March has uh, a lot of moving forward on what is most important to you and getting down to very, very basics. So all is not lost. Have faith. My forecasts are at Om Times and EmpowermentUnlimited.net. Um, see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you.